uh, what else and also before that we'll talk about uh, emi so this is very much important right so it all depends on the you know whenever we start installing or whenever we start creating an instance it all depends on selection of a emi whenever we select emi we were uh, saying it, you know it means to uh, selection of a operating system which you are using so before that uh, just let me uh, give you a quick uh, background on two device one right see please understand there are two types of uh, uh, volumes one is uh, root volume one is root value okay uh, let's say this is the uh, computer which i am trying to create and this is the of hard disk or uh, the volume which we are creating so here i can see there are two types of volume one is a uh, instance storage and another one is ebs back ebs in sense elastic uh, block storage okay so whenever we uh, create an instance on selection of a emi emi in the sense it's a amazon machine image so which means uh, we are selecting a operating system uh, which we would like to install on selection of a emi it also prefer which instance type or which storage type we are referring to see there are two types of storage one is instance storage and ebs storage when we talk about ebs storage it is permanent one please understand we will we will have a detailed discussion on uh, on this e- ebs topic it's a permanent one whereas instance storage are ephemeral ephemeral in the sense uh, they they are temporarily these are all temporary memory uh, if this can be used for caching purpose and for other purpose but whereas if you really want to uh, store the uh, data in a permanent basis until we you know uh, delete them so it is preferable to go ahead and select the ebs storage we will discuss that in our on selection of ama <coughs> just wanted to tell you about root device volume so whenever we create an instance uh, for example out here so i'm just selecting uh, ec2 and i'm trying to create a one instance which is a linux right so uh, i don't have any uh, any instance let me see some instance and here we see uh, same on my server and later for example let me select a ubuntu right If you see here, the root root device type is called as EBS. Do you see this? I don't know whether it is relevant for you now, but I just wanted to mention the uh, root device type by default it is selecting as EBS, which means Elastic Block Storage, and the virtualization is considered as HVM. HVM in the sense hardware. virtual machine so this is the virtualization type which is referring to and the by default it is considering ebs volume instead of the ephemeral or uh, instance storage we will see when we look into uh, uh, ebs uh, what the difference uh, here we will we will look at that we look into that but the thing is uh, i'm just highlighting here by default or ec2 instance by default it does select ebs volume as a root device volume why we call this as a root device volume whatever we select for example it is still available let me select this one okay let's select it and This is the key pair which I would like to give, and this is the instance type. That is fine. See, 
this is the configuration i was talking about whenever we create an instance by the by default it is uh, creating a 8 gb of storage or uh, it's a uh, it's a volume we call we call it as a volume this volume is called as a root volume so whenever it is we are creating a ec2 instance root volume knows which ami we are selecting which ami we are selecting ami refers to a operating system so as as in when we select this ami and uh, the root volume we selected as a ebs then aws will take care of the installation of a operating system as in when we attach this uh, storage part right so this is something called as ebs I mean, this is something called the root volume so root volume is the volume which will be created during the instance creation please understand the uh, root volume is created during the instance creation only and later whatever the volume you would like to add later this can be considered as a additional volume this cannot be a root volume please see the reason here so this this is the ebs volume uh, you know the if you look at the naming convention we consider this as a ebs volume this is the additional volume which we are you know uh, giving uh, to a ec2 instance whereas at the time of instance creation there, there is a volume which will be allocated again that is also of ebs only right this is also of ebs volume only but this is this this ebs volume is called as a root volume because this is created at the time of the instance creation this is the uh, difference between uh, you know root volume and ebs volume and when we come to root volume then we have two types of volume uh, that is instance storage and ebs so instance storage are temporary one which means whenever we uh, delete the instance or whenever we stop and stop whenever we restart the instance then uh, the data which are stored on the instance storage that might be wiped out right so whereas uh, when we are instead of instance storage if you go to ebs uh, storage then the data resides permanently where can we see those info right okay Th that can be seen in the emi part we will see what is exactly a emi so basically whenever we talk about emi it's a amazon machine image so on selection of the emi uh, we see that we are selecting a operating system with additional packages so basically uh, a emi will consist of uh, operating system details correct so uh, definitely it will have operating system in addition to it it does have the architecture of a particular operating system mm. plus mm -hmm. mm. so on your your okay so Uh, EMI will have the information of operating system, architecture, and also a storage of root device. This is what I was talking about. Whether it can be a instant storage or EBS back storage. Let us see where it is. So, for example, I want to uh, let uh, I want I have already selected a operating system for Amazon Linux. Now let me click on more EMI. Just go to. Community EMI. We will discuss this, but for now, I just wanted to show you. See, by default, uh, it is still it is showing Amazon Linux. The root device type is EBS. But if you want to know the instance type as I mean the device root device type as instance store, just come here. Come to you know click on the EMI. Come to Community EMI and click on the instance store. See here you can see. Uh, the root device type as instance store. So, while selection of uh, while creating a uh, EC2 instance, we should be very much careful on selection of a root uh, device type. So, there might be a requirement to have uh, your uh, data to be stored permanently. Then we are supposed to use uh, root device type as EBS. Or if your requirement to you know to use something kind of a caching, so in that case, caching. What exactly caching is? If you restart a machine, then whatever the cache will be there, everything will be wiped off and it it gets resetted. So if if that is your requirement, please go ahead and select these kind of instances 
or if, if you want to store store them permanently please go and select ebh wallet clear yeah. so this is the difference of uh, ebh pack and instant store right so and also which will have the virtualization pack so it's a para virtualization we call or uh, hardware virtualization so the uh, virtualization type also here will be able to so these are the information which are available as part of the selection of emi do you understand what exactly emi emi is nothing but it's a it's, it's something like a, a cd which has a operating system details what exactly this emi contains apart from operating system it does have the architecture it does have the storage info storage of the road device whether it's a instant storage or ebs pack and also virtualization pack so when do we need to select a instant storage if if we don't need a data to be permanently resided in my uh, storage then we go ahead and select the instant store root device we select instant store root device here so if data is needed permanently then it is preferable to use a root device type as ebs right so this is this is what about uh, ama now so basically uh, we have that was you know uh, we have many options here we have quick start ami so which means the, uh, the some of the ami or amazon machine images which have uploaded based on our requirement if it is you know as i mentioned we have windows in windows we have different uh, windows over edition as it comes to linux uh, we have moved to uh, many more uh, amazon linux red hat sent to us we have many flavors also and within the uh, flavors we will have different versions if you come to ubuntu we will have many versions of ubuntu version so whichever you need it you just select it and use it how do we uh, select it just just if you really need ubuntu one just type ubuntu then you will see many options so these are all freely available if uh, the freely fitted uh, eligible which is offering me uh what is the, yeah which will have the same again the virtualization also is also hpm and root device is uh, it, by default it is giving me as ebs so these are the different versions we see and based on that we will select it right but uh, we have my ami my ami in the sense if we create any ami ourselves and that can be seen under my ami so for example if we customize something and if you if you store somewhere and those details can be seen under by ama and ama marketplace in sense if let's say if new operating system which is coming up and they want to sell it right if that is the case so people they will come and upload their register within the aws and once they validated from their side they they list down your uh, newly created or newly proposed operating system one Right. So basically, uh, it's it's kind of a uh, improved work, improved version. You can say, see, even if you want to have a Splunk, yeah, Splunk is also compatible with AWS uh, EC2 instances. So we have different uh, software, or uh, along with your uh, operating system, where you can select your uh, desired operating system. So these are all paid work, paid paid version. Because uh, this is uh, if if someone has implemented something. So that they just go and upload it and they sell it here. And community AMI, uh, if you see, there will be some sort of communities. So they'll be uh, which is categorized and uh, they have listed here. So based the main uh, concept of community AMI here, here we can you know uh, select uh, our desired architecture, our root device, you know these, these details, everything. Here we can customize and we we are allowed to select. based on our need so basically it's kind of community and we will be scripting out based on our uh, need so jankar uh, i have one question our community am is free yes it is free okay you can select it but uh, if it is available if it is freely available you can use it but most of them they are not freely available do you see here No. And what if we want to install any like uh, separate OS which is not available here? Do you have any provision? 
see if, if it is not coming free definitely you can uh, you can go ahead and purchase uh, if you can install this uh, oh, yeah. i'm saying i'm trying to say like if i want to need, need a windows 10 kind of thing if it is not available so in this basic it version is not, if it is not listed here yeah. right no you can't use it so see uh, the instance creation is all uh, you know uh, tightly coupled with the EMI selection. So if you don't see any of your uh, EMI listed uh, here, then you can't use it. I mean, you, you can't install on top of it. So if that is it, you need to talk to your Amazon and you, you need to request, this is what uh, we are trying to uh, looking for. So probably they, they may implement and they'll be it. I don't think we will have that kind of situation one or other way, or uh, EMI will be supported in, in our real time scenarios. Okay. Yes. Now, so let's try to create an EMI. Uh, we'll see how it how exactly it works. So, which means the reason we select a EMI, right? Let let's create a scenario. Here. This is the EMI which I'm selecting. Okay, this is the EMI which I'm selecting, which is Amazon uh, I mean, machine image. So probably let me uh, do a Ubuntu. Let me select a Ubuntu EMI. Now, let me do some operations here. For example, let me try to install Apache Tomcat. Tomcat on it, uh, and where I'll develop some web. Right? On top of it, uh, let me open the ports or whatever. So let's make it very simple. I I want to select a Ubuntu AMI, okay? Or I want to create a machine. First of all, let me create a EC2 machine. And after I create a machine, let me install Apache Tomcat. After the installation of the Apache Tomcat, uh, let me implement my website or uh, whatever uh, you want to develop to develop it. Now, we have one option to say this complete uh, you know, uh, operating system by default, whenever we select, this is the EMI. On top of the EMI, what we have done, we have installed the Apache Tomcat. And afterwards, we implemented our website. Do you, do you see my point? See, a selection of a EMI, which refers to selection of operating system. After we create our instance, we will be selecting and we will be installing Apache Tomcat and additional uh, implementation of a website. Now, I have an option to save this uh, work as an image. I can call this as a EMI. This is called as EMI. Which means if somebody has done something uh, with the existing operating system, you can save that work and you can share it with others. Guys, please remember in your organization, if you, if you get a chance to create a EC2 instance, it is not that straight away you go ahead and create, uh, you, you go ahead and select a uh, EMI. So most of the cases, your organization will have a customized EMI, something like this, and they will give it to you. I mean, they'll just mention, please select this EMI. Please select this particular EMI. Whenever we select this EMI, then we don't have to customize, we don't have to install additional software, so which will be configured as per your organization. So that is the beauty of EMI, which means we'll be able to select our operating system on top of the operating system, we will be able to install additional software. If newcomer or if new joiner is joining our organization, then you don't have to install all these things. Instead, uh, you can just uh, go ahead and uh, create an instance by selection of this EMI so that uh, industry or organization standards will be maintained. Right? Let us try to do that. So in order to do that, let me just create one instance and we'll get, uh, make that as a web server. See why every time I'm just making uh, this server as a web server, I think it is easy to implement. Instead of making as a web server, you can do something else. Also. You can install something else or you, you, you can install some other you know, software also. That is up to you. 
the reason i am installing every time apache tomcat it is easier for me and i can show some something you know or uh, other demonstration so what is the agenda now what we will do we will create a ec2 instance right and what is the next step we will install apache and once we install apache tomcat and we will uh, customize our website and once we customize our website we will try to create a copy of instance whenever i say copy of the instance is a copying the image so what exactly this image will contain so it is just uh, this will have all the three ones so which will have the ec instance details which will uh, by default which will be installed up at enum cache and also the customized website also which will be present there so once we, well, after creation of our instance if you want to have that uh, image uh, to be ready then we'll have to create a image why do we need to create a image because more, it it does maintain the industry or your organization standard if someone wants to create a new instance we can just make use of these you know uh, image and uh, that whatever the prerequisites which are needed for a particular organization everything will be installed and maintained in the particular image correct so typically in the first in the first step while creating the ec2 instance we will just select the ubuntu image but later on we will uh, we'll try to you know select our image and see what how it works right so uh, for example let me uh, give this name as a website once again i'm i'm reiterating for me it is easier to configure a ec2 instance as a web server by installing apache tomcat so that's the reason i'm just giving an example of a web server if if you need something else to be installed and maintained you are free to install and maintain that one see this is the you know i'm just repeating this step uh, i'm just creating a bare ec2 instance a plain ec2 instance i'm not doing anything and this is the free tier eligible which i'm taking care and later uh, the key pair and with the linux one i've just selected linux p and uh, security group let us select the security group uh, which is already there in those user five just to check uh, whether we have okay we have ad port and also this is the port which is a 22 okay and what else yeah let's go as it is we will see how to uh, work with ebs little later today and let me click on launch in so here uh, today we have selected ubuntu and we will see uh, how to configure ubuntu machine to work as a web server so in our previous session we discussed with uh, apache i mean we installed apache tomcat on amazon linux operating system now uh, today we will see how uh, ubuntu one <coughs> let me copy the public ip of this one and putty how to download the putty we will see that uh, i think uh, one of our student they were asking how to download the putty we will see that probably at the end okay so the default or uh, the username for ubuntu operating system is ubuntu and i'll be able to log in now okay right? now what i'll do um see you can see some differences so if you just uh, remember for uh, amazon linux we did use yum repository right yum what did we do so the yum update so here it is saying yum is not turn, we are not able to recognize so in so for uh, you know it, it depends on the flavors of linux for uh, ubuntu flavor we use apt apt get root for this thing we will use apt get apt get and this is the tool we use to communicate with our ubuntu os for uh, amazon or uh, linux we were using yum repository correct so now i just updated now what is the step to install uh, 
Apache Tomcat in Ubuntu. Let's uh, do the APT get in the Apache 2. Okay. I have uncontained the Apache Tomcat on Ubuntu machine. Now, once we install, we will check uh, what is the status. And if it is running, then we are good to go ahead and check whether it is working. I think uh, in Ubuntu IP, this will be done by default. With, uh, IP address this one. So this is the default page which comes with Ubuntu. Now if you want to customize uh, just following the similar step, it should be in VAD www HTML. So most of you uh, with, you know you know that the index.html is the uh, default page, right? Let's see what is if I just delete it. Uh, what is the command to remove rm hyphen rs uh, index dot html? Okay, so sudo okay, it got deleted. Now, what will happen if you just you know uh, try to access this uh, server? So it will not have any uh, page, right? So that's the reason. Uh, index.html is the, uh, the default page where every web server will look into at the initial phase. And later we can navigate it, it, it and also we can customize it. Now, let me create a uh, index.html. Okay, so I'm just using VI editor. And this is my website. I'm just typing simply, uh, it's a kind of a website. This is the part where you can look into your you know, design. So if you are using Jira software, some Jira software code also, it has to be written you know, somewhere here. If you are using HP tool, that, in that you know, implementation also, it has to be that here, so, you know, somewhere like this. And I'm just, you know, hope to save this. So first you need to press on you know, escape and click on and press colon, write and quit. Okay, so because I'm not edited with soda, right? No, this transition and coming up at this one. Now, if we just refresh it, so you can see this is the one. Now, what is our requirement? We have these parts are done. Now, we'll have to create a image of it so that I don't have to maintain this particular instance. For example, see, with the, the outcome of this instance is this website, but I don't have to you know uh, keep this instance anymore. So because this instance maintenance will be on a cost occurring, right? So we don't have to maintain if that is the case. But if we have an option which is cheaper compared to comparing to maintain an instance, if we have an option to maintain that as an image so that I don't really rely on the this server, so that I can create multiple instances with the configuration which which I which I'll be extracting as an image. Okay, any questions here? I have created a EC2 instance and I have installed a couple of software. Now I am trying to create this as an image so that this image will have all the work which I have done here. And later I can delete this instance. I know where I am concerned with this instance. And if probably later, probably next week or in the next one, if some if, if we need uh, this configuration or this uh, whatever the setup I need, probably if I need it in future. There, I can just refer this EMI which I will be creating, and I can just create it. Let me show you that. 
Now see, this is the web server which has created. Correct? Now let me click on uh, action and click on image, create image. Please, please understand the work till now we just discussed about how to create an instance and how to install Apache Tomcat on Ubuntu operating system. Now I did after creation of my EC2 instance, I did a couple of work. I want to retain this work going forward so that that can be utilized for others in your organization. But you can't keep your instance every time up and running, right? And if you just keep this instance, that's not work for other people, right? Yes or no? See, if you just have an instance, if, if you have everything in your machine, I, I, I'm not benefited. So if everything, uh, if everyone has to be benefited, we need to just you know, make use of this configuration by extracting as an image. So in order to do that, what I'll do, I'll just create something called as an image. I'll just create something called as image. And by creation of an EC2 instance, I'll just refer to this particular image so that I don't have to do these things. Right? You will see that. So this is a web server which is acting me as a web server where I have a couple of things which have installed and maintained. Now, my job is to you know, so extract this as an image so that whatever the work which I have done on this machine, everything will be saved. So I'm clicking on create image. Just try to give image a name as a copy of web server. Right? The same thing which I'm doing, right? So I have a web server already. I'm trying to create a copy of the web server. So everything let's remain same and click on create image. Now image got created. Okay. Whenever you you can see that information under EMI. See, this is the EMI name we have given. So we'll just also give copy of Okay, so uh, one thing here is that, you know, uh, AWS will be keep on modifying their GUI, okay? So if you see uh, this image, uh, you know, these options, probably after a month or two months, uh, you know, there'll be customized uh, GUI options will be there. So that you, need to, you don't need to worry. But if you know how to search and how to uh, work. Now I'm creating a image. Please understand, uh, I have created a, EC2, EC2 instance, and on top of the EC2 instance, I, I just installed a couple of things. Now, I want to delete this instance. I don't want to keep it anymore. It's up to you whether you keep this instance or not. But if, uh, let's say, I have a team of six, and all the six members, they need to have my system configuration whenever they uh, they create a EC2 instance, or whenever they, uh, they are allocated with the machine. So if that is the case, we have a AMI, we have an image which is already there where I have uh, configured the necessary software and installations so that uh, if someone asks me, I'll just ask him to use this image while creating a EC2 instance so that you don't have to do all these things. Any questions here? Meantime, it creates an uh, image. Uh, we know Vivek, Sai, Raveen, Raveen. Uh, can anyone explain uh, the uh, importance of EMI? Uh, Lakshman, please uh, uh, say it in your hand. I still see your raise your hand. So, Anything you want to ask? Yeah, actually, I want to uh, clarify like uh, means image is there, right? We have created instance, and uh, we, means if we create image, it will uh, get created, right? Means total, it will uh, give image, uh, like uh, whatever websites we have created, like two or three websites if we created, like that. Yeah, like, so that's the purpose. That is the purpose of creation of an image. So. If you if you come and join me in my company the next time, 
then i don't have to you don't have to configure everything from scratch i'll just say when uh, lakshman please uh, make use of this uh, you know image and you create your instance so that uh, whatever the prerequisites are there everything should be available and other thing uh, with the help of image we can't able to create no we are just it's like a reference that's it no no with the help of this image only we will be creating the another ecg it's type so of it's reference it. right it's kind of a uh, reference in the sense it's, it's a uh, additional image i can say it's a image i can say right because uh, anyhow in order to create your ecg instance you need a image Correct. Okay. Let me try to create another one. No, no. Uh, uh, suppose uh, you have created one instance. Actually, I have joined the company and you have taken that image as a part, and you have given you have given me that image like to try to create like this, like that. Ah, uh, means that is like reference only, right? With that reference only, I need to create that image, like uh, same instance again. You can consider. Yeah. yeah, that's what I'm saying. Okay, so now I'm creating a, a machine for Lakshman. Now, see, I'm creating another one. Now, instead of selecting this Ubuntu or something else, I'll just click on my AMI. Please note here, on click on my AMI, I could see the AMI which I have created. This is the beauty. Correct? See, which is already selected, or if you have multiple. uh emi which uh, which you have already created you can see the list here see instead of selection see by, by default it will be a recent one and you can see something fit on the recent if you select you know you can in the drop down you can see ubuntu image whereas if you click on uh, my emi because this is my emi here you can see this is the one which we have created right and we have selected and it is the same step Which I'm following, and let me create a. Let me select the Linux key. Hotels. Uh, let me select the uh, group. Which is the. Let's also just you know check and double check whether we have the necessary ports have been enabled. And hotels we have. Check on. So, what will be the outcome? I don't have to log in to this. I don't have to access to this machine. Uh, I don't have to install anything. So, by default, this machine will also have the behavior of the machine which I can see here. So, as of now, we have uh, two instances. One is. a web server which i have already created now i now i am resting a lakshman uh, machine let me just copy the public ip of this instance and let me check so the recently see this is a beauty so this is the first web server and this is the second web server which i have created just by selecting the emi now what i can do i can you know anyhow even i can delete this uh, web server also i don't need this anymore right i'm just terminating so even you can delete uh, lakshman uh, this one also no issues again this ami will be there right and uh, if you come and log in tomorrow or next time just you know uh, you, can, you can just select the emi which is set here and you can create your instance so that which will have all the necessary info which you have configured any questions here so even though if we if we have terminated right uh, so uh, mm -hmm. since it's permanent it's going to take and capture the data whatever is configured Correct. So that's how we have cap we have captured we have captured this as an image. This image will be there, right? See whatever. See, yeah. Let us install. I mean, let us terminate this instance also. No issues. Okay. I don't have any any instance now, but instead I have a image which is already there. Now, if I just 
because under AMI still I can see this image which is available. Now, when you come and uh, create a new instance next time, you can just you'll have to just select this AMI and just continue with your uh, creation of the incident. Provided you need, you don't, you should not delete this one. If you delete it, whatever the work you have saved, everything will go away. Jenga, what is that status available kind of thing? And will this image will be like if you store more images, will there be any license cost or kind of thing or any like no license purchase? Cost. No license cost because we are you are uh, you know making you already available for that. You will be paying right as, as of now, it is uh, now freely eligible t2.micro, so we are not paying it, but I uh, know. In your real time, you, you should be able to select the higher version, higher configuration, and you can definitely you'll be paying for it. You're not paying only for you know uh, operating system, you're paying for an instance. Uh, so everything will be taken care by Amazon after after you create you create an instance. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Praveen, is that clear? Uh, any any questions coming? No, thanks. So, if if you want to maintain this, you can maintain. But again, this will be costing. So I'll just delete it. Uh, no, for now. But this is the official. Even test. though, even though we have uh, made it as free tier, right? Will it be costed? See, is it means to cost? I know it's it really up, you know really eligible for some time. For you know what okay. is over, whatever we listed. These are all uh, again. It is uh, part of the institute, right? So this will cost for sure. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So can I delete it, or you want to create a instance, one more instance out of this one? You want to see, or we we'll go ahead. Uh, we'll proceed further. Oh, Jenk Jenker, can you can you please? Uh, I mean, I think I followed this, but uh, can you please also try to touch upon? How we can make it available to other users? Uh, I believe this this probably looks to be a private visibility, right? And how do we, in our organization, how do we make an EMI visible to other users? Good question. So uh, on the EMI section, we have something called as permission. Okay. So here you can click on edit and you can select. You can make this as a private or public. If you just make it public, then uh, if you can just share this EMI ID, that can be available to everybody. And if you want to make it as a private, so typically you have something called as account ID here, right? So just copy this account ID, or if, if you have someone's account ID, I can just paste it here. If you if you can uh, if you have already logged into AWS account, if you can uh, share me, if you can ping me your uh, AWS account ID, I'll just you know put it here and I can add the permission so that. Only that uh, the person who logs in to uh, AWS with that account number is able to see, he'll have the visibility of this image so that he can create by his own. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Yeah, that's a good question. So basically, this is how we permit the user to make use of the uh, images. And as in when we create an image, okay. so whenever we create a we created a copy an image, right? A snapshot gets created. See, uh, let me show here. This is the image, or uh, this is the snapshot which got created as part of. EMI. Please understand why do we have this snapshot? See, uh, whenever we create an EMI, right, AWS will keep minimum three copies of this snapshot. Please understand, AWS will maintain three copies of this snapshot so that if something goes wrong, they can just go ahead and create a image from the snapshot. Can you can we see that? Do you see my point? See, this is kind of a backup. Let's say we have an EMI. 
this uh, for example let's say if we delete this ami this one also this will also get deleted what is there exactly uh, snapshot so in order to achieve high availability aws what exactly it does it does maintain minimum three copies of this image across aws so that if something goes wrong with this image then it will try to immediately give it back so this is how the snapshot works so whenever we create a uh, emi or whenever we copy an emi uh, emi a snapshot gets created so in order to if you want to delete a snapshot then you need to deregister a emi and you need to delete the snapshot can we try to delete a snapshot let's see it works we have a deregister what do we have so we have an option here First, we need to deregister let's see uh, uh, um, deregister what will happen sorry i deleted emi all right so sorry it my it's my bad i need to i was supposed to do a deletion of snapshot no problem now emi got deleted now it's on to this over create a image from a snapshot do you see my point here I see that's how by mistake I deleted the uh, image. Now I don't have any AMI which are listed down here. Now if you want to create your EC2 instance now, you can't select a AMI which have saved because I have deleted the image. For example, Let me click on my AMI. See, I don't see anyone because I have just deleted it, right? Now, if that is the case, we have we have something called as snapshot, right? So, with the help of this snapshot, again I can create an image of mine. So, let me try to do that. Create a image from snapshot. So, so we covered image also. I'll just uh, maintain the first one. Now let me create a image. Now, if you can see, please understand. Now, my image is ready here. Now, you can go ahead and select your. Let's try to create a visit instance. Things deleted taking some time. Now I should be able to see that image which is selected. This is the recovered image, right? And let me try to give a sample, and everything remains same. See uh, what I'm trying to do here. See. First, I created an instance. I installed something, and I I just you know uh, before deleting the instance, before terminating this instance, I created a copy of this image, so that with the help of this image, uh, I can create multiple uh, instances going forward with the same configuration. And later, by mistake, I deleted the image also. But 
please remember whenever we create an image, there will be something called a snapshot which is created for for that particular image. Right? So I just went inside of the snapshot and I just created an image out of it. And now with the help of this image, I am trying I am trying to create a easy to use. Now we can see the listed AMI, which is this uh, covered one. And let's see. Wait, okay. yeah, this is the instance which have created right away. Now let me copy the public IP of this one. It does really work for me. What we have done now, we created a EC2 instance. Let's summarize. We created a EC2 instance, and afterwards, we installed something. Softwares. Uh, we created a image of above, right? For example, I just call this as a web server. Okay, we just you know, uh, okay, we'll just call this as a web server. Right? Now, what have done? Have created an image of web server. Now, the uh, this is the fourth step which we have done and later as a fifth step we uh, terminated the instance right? we, we terminated the web server and uh, what is the web server image we are given web server image what will have this image will have all the info which we have listed on there and after we terminated our instance we created a EC2 web server image AMI, right? And it worked as well, correct? It worked. And later, what we did? We deleted the, uh, what is the image? Web server image. We deleted the web server image. And we learned that we know whenever we create an AMI, whenever we create our customized image, there will be something called a snapshot. Snapshot also gets created. So, so that after we delete our you know, this image, we make use of this snapshot, and from this snapshot, we created we created our image back. The help of this image with the help of this image, we created a new EC2 instance and which will act which acted as a web server. Any questions here? This is what we'll learn today. Any questions? Anyone of you can continue with that? Like, like if we delete uh, everything, right? Or if you terminate even the snapshot, then we'll not be able to recover, right? This is the final stage. 
Okay. 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 The reason, uh, the thing I mentioned by mistake, uh, I mean, the why uh, AWS maintains three copies. If AWS has done some mistake from their side, then it will immediate, immediately to provide, I uh, know, all the same code to us. It is not, uh, uh, I mean, they are they are not keeping for human mistakes from our side. Is it is it also for here? Correct. correct. This is for disaster recovery. Forget about this one. In going forward, I uh, know we'll be using multiple you know, resources. AWS still they do maintain multiple copies because if something uh, something goes wrong with uh, one data center, then it's uh, AWS uh, responsibility, right, to give all those info. So that's the reason it does maintain multiple copies to maintain high availability, also to cover disaster recovery. Yeah. Yeah. Can you show that uh, like uh, uh, options, whatever available in like snapshot, like uh, other options, like how can we use that? Yeah. Okay. Create can names, copy. like copy snapshot. Okay. I mean, you can copy to uh, from one region to another region also. So you, you can, you know, you can try with these options. So as of now, uh, this is in, I think, AP South 1. You, you can copy to AP South, uh, you know, whatever the region you want. And that is also permitted. So that uh, whenever you uh, copy this image, and let's say this is U, U West 2, and if you just go and select that particular uh, region, then you'll be able to uh, have the snapshot ready. Okay. Yeah. Okay, you can try these options. Yeah. And also, you can, can, can you, you can also copy the instance. Yeah. You can copy the images also, not the instance. You can copy the images to uh, another region also. Can you copy instance to snapshot, like directly, like live instance? Instance snapshot not instance snapshot which which uh, means to uh, this one only right? See, uh, I created a base mission. Oh. Like after that, uh, I spin up some VM. Then I did some customization. Now I want to save that. Instead of saving as like uh, this image, can I save it snapshot directly? Once you create, uh, you are supposed to create an image. Okay. After you create an image, a snapshot gets created. You you cannot have a direct snapshot from the Okay. That should get created on creation of an image. Okay. So similarly, you can copy uh, this AMI to other uh, region also. So these things you can try. Right. So here is it saying so destination region. So if you want to uh, copy this AMI to Sydney, that is also available. For example, let's show. Let's say I'm just you know. Uh, Copying this, I am in a Mumbai region. Now I am trying to copy this AMI within my account to North Virginia region. So I am just clicking the copy AMI. <clears throat> okay, this is that. Now, if I switch to uh, North Virginia, I should be able to see a AMI of uh, image which I have copied. This is the North Virginia region. And this is the recording. Do you see it? So, this is how you need to uh, copy an image from one region to another region. As I mentioned, whenever we create an image, I mean, whenever we copy an image, a corresponding snapshot also, it will be there. Correct? Yes, sir. No. And let's try to create a 
I mean, delete the snapshot. Okay, delete it. And let's also remove this. I mean, delete and delete the AMI. Okay, and then. So this is our, see what we did. We uh, created an image in Mumbai region and later we copied that image to here. And with this uh, image, you can also create instances in a not only in a region also. That is also possible, right? That, that's how we did it. Now, coming back to Mumbai region and let's see, let us delete all our work we have done now. Let's let me take this delete our instances if we have any. Let me terminate and uh, after terminate again, I could see AMI. No. My job is to delete this. Uh, AMI, AMI, delete and listen. I should deregister. I should click on continue. Afterwards, I should delete this snapshot. Okay. Hello. Yes. That the images in the Mumbai region. Hello, yes, brother. Uh, we created image in the Mumbai region uh, after deleting with the help of snapshot. Uh, we will create uh, recreate now, sir. Uh, it is possible to create in a different location like uh, Tokyo or something. That's what we did, right? <coughs> See, we need, a, we need an image, first, right? So, with the as and when, when we create an image, a snapshot of the image will be created automatically by AWS. So, uh, once we create an image, this uh, you can see under AMI and also snapshot. So, in the first case, what we did was we deleted a AMI, but still there was a snapshot of that AMI, and with the help of that, I just created an image from the snapshot. And from that image, I created an instance. So, in order to create an instance, you don't need a snapshot, you need an image. So by mistake we had we had deleted the image. So we just recovered from this option, like you know, create an image from the snapshot. So as we had a snapshot here, we created a image, and with the help of the image, we created a easy instance. And as part of this, what we did was we copied a snap. We can also copy a snapshot, or we can also copy a EMI. So see if we just come here, we can just copy EMI. And once you click on this copy EMA, you can select the destination. You just did it, right? Few few okay. seconds back. Yes. So basically, you need a EMA. You need an image to create a instance. So uh, if you have done something on the image and you want to extract it as a uh, image, your custom image, you can save it, you know, by extracting as an image. And you can share that image with anyone in your in your organization so that they can just make use of it and you can also copy your image from one region to another region. Okay. Yeah. Fine. So let's look into EBS quickly. Let's try to understand uh, what exactly a EBS means. It's an elastic block storage. This is a service in AWS. So if you can see, uh, see here you can see elastic block storage. Here you have volume, snapshot, and lifecycle manager. Before getting to it, let us understand how a file system works in Windows and how it works in Linux. See. In Windows, it is something like, you know, uh, let's say, this, is, this is what the Windows, right? Here we have uh, C drive, E drive, F drive, 
and if you if you insert some pen drives or uh, additional drive also it will show here so which means this is the by combining a one volume called physical volume for example 100 200 200 so 500 gb including all these disks right including all these three all the three disks we call as a physical volume and later based on my requirement i have divided my drive for example here let's consider c and d so here we have c e and f these drives are called as logical volumes or logical drives uh, in physical computers when it comes to aws or cloud they are called as logical volumes so the physical volumes are the one when we buy a computer let's say if, 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 I, if i have to say my uh, system configuration i should say 500 gb of my uh, hard disk is there so if that is the case i have divided my 500 gb into three different drives these drives are called logical drives here and in aws we call them as a logical volume and within which we can create multiple directories right so what will be the path so if i have to uh, go to d drive i should get into d drive right and for example here he and here say have a data and here i, I can see your attendance data as well, which has you know uh, stored here so this is the hierarchy when it comes to windows right this is quite simple now let us try to understand how exactly a linux works in linux there will not be anything like you kind know, of physical volume or logical volume everything is called as root volume everything is called as root volume for example if we create a ec2 instance with 8 gb of uh, hard disk space that we can't divide that uh, root volume into a logical volume how we did it here right so in windows in 500 gb i divided into three uh, drives c d e and uh, each drive have allocated certain volumes whereas in linux i can't achieve that because uh, it 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 will not allow to you know partition your uh, root volume but instead you can add additional volumes as well and show it to you later for example let's say this is the root volume which has and if i have a, a directory called bin this will be the sub directory a directory under root and if i have another folder so please look at the path here i should come under under bin and abc and within that i can create a folder like this <clears throat> don't get confused just you uh, know as in windows a uh, physical volume can be divided into multiple logical volumes whereas uh, in linux everything will be considered as a root volume if someone has to attach it here it has to be come by a root volume only for example if i attach additional volume to this device then i cannot access directly as i can access d drive here if i have to access this d drive i should get into root volume under the reference of root volume only i should be able to access the additional devices or additional uh, folders right we will confuse we will see uh, how exactly it works and we will uh, we'll see how it works now i just go through some basics of you know ebs it's a basically whenever a volume gets allocated when, uh, whenever volume uh, you know volume in essence it's a elastic block storage which will be kind of your hard disk drive to your computer so which will be unformatted so but whenever we create a instance by selection of our uh, you know ebs volume this will be exposed as a raw device raw device in essence which is unformatted we we'll have to format it correctly and just go through this ebs volume types you know general purpose io one and all if needed we'll discuss all these things in tomorrow's session let me try to just create a you know a additional volume and try to attach it and we'll also talk about snapshot for uh, tomorrow so now let's uh, what i'm trying to say <clears throat> 
see we are creating a linux ec2 instance create a linux ec2 instance which has 8 gpf hard disk this is a computer and i call this as a uh, linux server this linux server will have 8 gpf hard disk i i may think okay i may need additional disk i have already created probably after one year or two years i realize that it may need additional volume in order to create additional volume i need to create something called as ebs right so this is the volume which i am creating and i will try to mount this ebs volume to this ec2 instance this is something called as mount right see if you have any linux machine on in your organization please go and check just type df h this is the command which will list out all the available disks uh, to your computer or we have something called as lsd okay we will see that do you all understand the uh, the importance importance of having the ebs volume it's a additional volume which i am trying to create to help my already existing instance but in our example uh, we have a instance with 8 gb of hard disk now i let's say if i have to have another 5 gb of uh, ebs volume we can create it any questions here why do we need additional volume it all depends on our requirement if we need additional volume we can make use of this ebs and we can create it okay let's see just quickly uh, let me create an instance and let me create a volume and let's see how it works so i'll just linux machine just go with any of the existing one so let me select another linux only cdr1 and let me select the key pair and let me select the existing group if i remember correctly that should be uh windows yeah it is port is enabled and can continue mainly i was looking at the control to Now let me create a instance. Now I have a instance which is ready. it is running so let me copy this ip of this machine and let me have the session and let me log into this machine let me show you how the folder structure works here yes sir uh ls dlk is the command which will let you know how many devices are there see i have selected a uh, 8 gb of hard disk while creation of ec2 instance i can see this is the root volume the slash the slash uh, no uh, which will uh, which will tell you this is a root volume so whenever you see a uh, slash under your uh, this is the root value whenever you see a slash alone alone slash you see right so this is something called as your root volume so there are no additional devices which are mounted i can see only one device which i can see one volume which is of 8 gb and out of it 1.6 gb of we have already utilized and remaining 6.5 gb is of free that we can utilize But now, if my requirement is to have additional volume, something like another disk, something like we have, if we need to have another volume, something like this, 
I can create a volume and I can attach to this EC2 instance. Clear? Can we do that? Yes or no? Yes, no. Yes. Now, coming to elastic block storage and click on volume. Okay. So, just click on create volume. See, uh, you are already seeing the volumes here. So, this is the volume which is created by instance. Right? When, I, when, when we create an instance, so you can say it's an instance volume. So, this volume got created when I created a new set instance. Now, I'm trying to create an additional volume. So, let us try to create. So, size, because if I just go with the year one, it will be uh, risky. So, just let me go with 5 GB of storage. Uh, and you're supposed to uh, make sure the availability zone where you have created your instance. So, if you have created your instance in particular availability zone, you're supposed to make use of that availability zone while creating the volume. The AP one A. Okay, so this is also correct. So I'm just making this up. Same. I'm just to create a volume. Okay. This is the volume which got created. It's a EPS volume. Okay. See, five GB have that. I have created. Now I need to uh, mount this particular volume to the EC2 instance which which have already created. Okay. So if you just you know just see here if an edge, so I can see only one uh, volume I can see which is of eight GB. Now if I have to uh, mount this one, I'll have to select this. I have to click on action. Volume should come. It is needed. Okay. Now I could see the options, right? So what I'm doing here, I just selected the volume which I have created newly, and now I click on action. Now I am selecting attach volume. Now, where exactly I need to attach this volume as the additional volume in this instance which I have created. If you have many, you can you can see them in a drop down, right? And you can give the device name. See, the first the disk detail is XVDA1, and now the additional data, additional disk name which is asking, you can also give your name or you can just leave it. Now, if you go back and see your instance, still it is not mounted. See what we did? In the volumes, I had attached this one, but I just attached it, but I had not formatted a, a volume which have into this movie. So in order to attach and uh, no, in order to uh, <laughs> now to format a new uh, volume to uh, existing easy to instance, we'll have to perform certain steps. Team, please understand, don't get confused. Hmm. By default, uh, whenever I created easy to instance, I just created uh, with the help, I mean, with AGB uh, hard disk. And later point of time, I I realized that I may need additional uh, hard disk space. So I decided to create a EBS volume. How to create a EBS volume? So under Elastic Block Store, I clicked on volume, and afterwards I create. Uh, we have an option to create a volume. So this will be the additional volume which I am creating. And after we create, we will just go and attach the volume. It doesn't mean that we can use them in, you know, immediately. So once we attach, we are also supposed to perform a 
once we attach we have to mount this particular volume to our existing instance by formatting so we have multiple tools uh, in the market so as of now we are going with exp right guys are you are you getting confused or tell me no no following this yeah yes too much if it is too much we can take it tomorrow that's not an issue Uh, you can continue now. When we are we are able to uh, cope up with these things. Super, thanks. This is the uh, these are the steps we need to maintain. So the, still you can see we we created a vol we created a volume. Let us summarize here. So what we did we created a in situ instance and after we created a in situ instance. Let's say with eight GB of hard disk, and later we realize that we need to increase the volume of your EC2 instance. And if that is the case, what do you need to do? You need to have an additional volume. So create a volume, or create a additional. Volume under EBS, right? Under EBS, you have some options for volume, and afterwards you need to click on Create Volume. And size size is five GB. With for example, with that much, and I created a volume. And after I created the volume, I need to attach. or uh, additional volume to ec2 instance this also we have done and after we attach it we need to format the volume or we need to format the device then only uh, we will be able to see in the instance right i mean uh, we are, you know if you have some linux background you will understand better but uh, Let's try to give my best. Uh, later, if you have some questions, we'll take it. Okay. So yeah. this part are done. Formatting the volume will be done in uh, Linux only, right? Application. Ah, uh, correct. I mean, in the yeah. machine. Yeah. We are doing it now. Now, uh, let us see what steps needs to be taken here. So these things we have done. So still we are checking. So I could see only. Uh, yes, I can hear. If I see, I could I could only see the only one volume which is uh, created as part of our instance creation. Nowhere, uh, though, have created another uh, volume and attached it, but still I am not able to see because I have not uh, mounted it. Now, how to do that? First of all, this is a command. This is a command where we can check whether this is mounted or not. File open s. Uh, what is the This is the XVDF. This is the machine, right? Uh, right. No resolution. Okay. Which means uh, it is not formatted. How can we see it is formatted? Just I mean, instead of XVDF, instead of this one, we can just see XVDA. The formatted machine, the formatted disk will have this kind of information. Whereas it is saying it is the data which is available but not yet formatted. So in order to do that, we will have to make use of a Tool for EXT. We have EXT one, two, three, four, five also. So I'm comfortable with EXT four. What what exactly? Yes, EXT uh, uh, tool will uh, do here. It is kind of a interface which will help me to connect uh, EC two instance volume to a 
EPS volume which have created new. So the whatever the volume which have created here. So with the help of EXP, I will try to mount here. With the help of this EXP, I will mount to our EC2. Right? We will see that. So how to mount it? So MKFS. We are done it. I twenty and this is the XT four. XT four is a two and what is the device name? It's the XPG. Yeah. Guys, are you understanding what is XPG and XPG one? See. See, this is the root volume which we got it from the. Instance creation, and when I created an additional volume, it is uh, we have named it as XDF. It's a it's kind of a C drive or D drive. Okay, so C drive it is formatted. I can see, but D drive I don't see any uh, any other information. How how did we say it is not formatted? Yes, nowhere I see a mount part. I can only see a 8 GB of info, not the 5 GB of info. With this command, ts i can h. In this command, I should see whatever the uh, devices which are mounted. Here, I am not seeing any uh, devices which is having a XVDF, which is a 5 GB. Still, the volume is already created, but we are not using it. In order to use it, we need to mount this device, mount this particular volume to the CPU. That is what we are doing. How to do it? MKFS XT4 XT4 is the tool and test and this is the XVD. This is the part of the test. Okay. Now, if you can execute this one, okay. Right. So what I'm doing here to execute this command, like right. whether it is mounted or not. Previously it was just showing data. Now it is showing something else. Do you see here? Previously, when executed here, you can clear it. It was just showing a data, which means which is not uh, formatted. Now I formatted it. Now I'll be able to see this particular device info. But still, we have not mounted. We just formatted it. Now we'll have to mount. How to mount a, a device? For example, we'll have to create a folder. In KBIR EBS volume, so this is the EBS volume folder which I am creating. Guys, are you all with me? First, I just you know uh, just uh, check what are all the devices or disks are available, and later I got to know there is only one device. Then I attach. After the attach, I could see SVDF one and SVDF as the additional volume. Now, I just after we formatted, I want to mount this particular volume. In order to mount the volume, I am creating a folder called EBS volume. If you, you can you can give any name, that is not an issue. Now, how to mount it? So we have this one. So mount tab. What is the device name? XVDF, and where exactly you are mounting to so EBS volume? Which means the newly created uh, volume you are trying to mount it to a folder which is available in uh, EC2. Now, if we could see, please, please look, uh, look here. This is the additional volume we are mounting, and this is the part I was talking about. <clears throat> if you see, this is the completely a uh, new. This is the completely new volume we are trying to achieve. Correct? This is the volume. Probably this is the volume which I am trying to uh, attach. But still, I have a reference of root volume. I cannot directly access this volume straight away because Linux is not permitting me because it considers that I am the root. If you really want to create any folder, you can create it. No issues. Or if you want to have additional volume, you can attach it. 
but still it should have a reference of root so that's the reason we had to create a uh, folder called root and uh, it should attach to uh, your ec trend now for example uh, just to see uh, Let's uh, let's get into this EJS volume and let me create some uh, TXT. This is the thing. Have so see, I can see one dot TXT under EJS volume. Now I could I can see this is attached. This is still attached. Now let us see. If uh, let us try to unmount this. Let us try to remove this. Device and let us see if we still can see uh, the file which I have created. So in order to do that, I'll just unmount you on there and exit. Now unmounted. See if I just do df hyphen x, I don't see the information which I was seeing. Correct. This info is missing because we just see yeah, I know we just uh, removed the dependency of this particular volume, and now you could still see the EBS volume, but it should not be you will not be able to see the content of this folder because it is not attached. We just detached it, right? So now in order to do that, in order to attach it, attach it again, we'll have to mount, right? Mount. What 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 do we need to do? We'll have to mount XV DF to this one. Once we see that, we can get into okay. Let's see whether if we just type DF as an edge. See now after we attach, we could see that. Now uh, if we go to EBS volume, if we can see, we should be able to see the uh, the file which I've created. Okay, fine. It is too much for today. Uh, but please go back and uh, please watch this video and try to practice it until and unless you practice. I mean, I don't think you know you'll be fallen. So I request all of you to practice once again. If you have some question on this, we'll take it tomorrow and we'll also see uh, why do we uh, need to uh, go with the EBS volume and what else we have and uh, what are these types and everything. Just to show uh, these things, I've just you know uh, shown here. So this is how in real time, definitely we will have multiple requirements like this. We'll have to create an image. I mean, we'll have to create a EC2 instance, and later they they will come up with the one requirement. Okay, whatever the allocated uh, uh, space is not sufficient. So these things uh, again we'll have to create a EBS EBS volume, and we'll have to attach it to here. Yeah. And definitely there will be Linux administrator who will be helping you. But as a, at least as this, this this comes under EBS, you need to know how to create a EBS volume. So you, and you should also know how to attach to your region. This is what we did, right? We created an instance, and uh, if you want to increase the volume uh, by adding a, a additional volume, then we created a volume under EBS, and afterwards we attached it and we formatted it. And after we formatted it, we mounted our device. We mounted. So how did we mount it? We created a folder and we created a folder and mounted to the uh, EC2 instance so that which which can be recognized as an additional volume, as you can see. You can unmount and mount. Okay. Uh, Naveen, can we consider this one as like, you know, uh, as if we are co uh, connecting this USB to a Linux machine? Because we Correct. are mounting and unmounting the uh, physical drive, like, you know, and uh, the file water we have created, like one dot text, it is not uh, getting replaced or it is not getting deleted. So can we consider this as USB? Correct. You can consider that as a USB. It's an original drive which uh, you are temporarily giving. Okay, yeah. and you can work as long as you need. And once 
you don't need it we can take it we, you can take out from that machine and if somebody needs it you can attach so it doesn't matter like you know uh, if we have one more linux machine we can attach to that one as well without formatting at that time uh, we have certain limitations that i'll be discussing tomorrow only okay. uh, multi previously uh, multi attach was not supported please understand my ebs uh, whatever the volume we created right it can't uh, be attached to multiple ec2 instances but now we have one uh, solution there is something called as nitro based systems we have i mean this is uh, somewhere it comes to r5 or m5 only for those devices only for those we cannot attach uh, ebs volume with this t2.nitro instance type are you following this thing yes yes now I have created a ECT instance with T2.micro. I can't attach the same volume with uh, another uh, T2 T2.micro machine, but we have certain machines called nitro-based machines. We can attach up to 16 machines, which means a single EBS volume, a single EBS volume can be attached to multiple uh, up to 16 ECT instances, which is of nitro-based. So, which which will be which is a higher end machine. We can. we can attach a same volume okay thank you we will see that uh, okay any other things for today it's already we are i mean let me stop the recording also okay i request all of you to just